fellow mathematician. Uh, I'm, I'm still recording, okay. Mathematicians, welcome back to another video. We are going to talk about something extremely important today yet again. Yes, everything we do here is extremely important just because it is, because it's elementary and elementary things are really important. We would like to talk about negative exponents today. And in a normal case, we, we only like assumed um, for something to be of natural number order. So, so for example, five squared, five cubed, etc. And also we introduced the notion of something to the zero of power. This is one less time around somewhere. And today we would like to talk about, for example, um, I don't know, five to the negative one power, to the power of negative one or seven to the negative 18th power. I don't know, doesn't matter. You see, we are kind of extending our sets of numbers on our exponents here, just like we did um, in the first playlist. So we started with the naturals, then we added a zero to it, then we went over to the positive and negative integers, and, and maybe pretty soon we are going to talk about rational exponents. But for today, we are going to deal with just this because it's highly important. If you understand this and exponentiation rules, then you also understand fractions to their full extent. So listen to this, it's important. We are going to start off with something really easy, something we have derived last time around. So three to the zero of power. Something to the zero of power, okay? Zero to the north power is nothing but one. As long as our base is not equal to zero, this is well defined and nice to handle. Now I would like to rewrite the zero here. And now I would just like to think back to the sets of numbers. What have we done to kind of introduce or motivate our negative integers? What we said was that we are going to take, for example, the equation x plus three and set it equal to zero. Now, what was the solution to this thing? Well, obviously by subtracting three on both sides, we have that x is equal to negative three. Meaning if we just add the negative three to the three, we are going to get zero. Just makes sense. If you have three apples and I'm going to take three apples away from you, you don't have any apples and you're going to be a sad, sad boy without any apples and vitamins. Now we are going to use the same technique here and it really doesn't matter how we are going to express our zero here. Let us say that zero is nothing but five minus five. It really doesn't matter. So our zero exponent is nothing but five minus five. Okay, we have rewritten it in a weird way. Why did we do that? Well, just because we learned how to use exponentiation rules in the first episode about exponentiation rules overall. Remember, same base, different exponents. a to the nth power times a to the mth power was nothing but a to the n plus mth power. Meaning we are multiplying exponentials together and we are going to add our, well, exponents together overall. What we have here in the exponent is, is nothing but this right here on the right hand side, a to the n plus mth power, just with our m being negative this time. So adding and subtracting are basically the same thing, they are just inverses to each other. So we can rewrite our five minus five as three to the five plus negative five. We already have shown that negative times positive is just negative yet again. So those two are indeed equal yet again. And now we are just going to make use of this rule and we are going to proceed backwards. We have something of the form a to the n plus mth power. Now we just need to identify what n and m actually are, identify our base. Our common base is three and then we are basically done. What is our n exactly? Our n in this case is nothing but, well, five. All right, obviously it's, it's the left hand thing. It's, it's five here, that's kind of obvious. What is our m exactly? Well, m is the thing behind the plus sign. It's, it's negative five here. Just compare coefficients basically. So what we have now is a new equation, which is kind of interesting. We have that one is nothing other than three to the fifth power times three to the negative fifth power. Let us write this out yet again. So one is nothing but three to the fifth power times three to the negative fifth power. And now we can just simply solve an equation in some way. You can rename your three to the negative five power, the, the thing that we want to find out actually to be nothing but x, 
the thing you are striving for. So this is just like with the rational numbers. Okay, so we motivated the rational numbers by an e equation, for example, three times x is equal to one. And this is kind of the same situation. We have something times an x we are looking for being equal to another quantity. How can we solve this? Well, by dividing by the quantity that is still connected to our x right here. So we are going to divide by three to the fifth power, meaning overall, that 3 to the negative 5th power is nothing but 1 over 3 to the 5th power. And this is really curious, right? I mean, this might come as a real surprise to most students that we are taking an exponent, which is negative in some way. We can easily motivate it like this. And we are going to end up with this quantity basically on the left hand side, just being div divided by, it's a fraction. And as a matter of fact, each and every fraction can be expressed using exponentiation rules. In this case, negative exponents in some way. And this is highly curious if you ask me. Meaning, we can generalize this idea and here's kind of a little monomic device. Monomic, that's a weird word. I don't usually say it, but this is kind of a monomic device. If we have some a to the negative nth power, what you do is you take the negative sign here and just put it up on top, shift it up a tiny little bit. Turn the negative sign into this Bruchstrich, this little line. I have forgotten the word here again. Someone told me in the comments what it's called. Never mind. So like the fraction divider, you could say. Turn this negative sign into the fraction divider thing and just put the rest underneath the fraction bar. And then just put a one on top and then you are done. So some a to the negative nth power is nothing but one over a to the nth power. So let us actually apply this new theorem that we have here, this, this new little identity, which is really important. For example, five to the negative one power is thus nothing but, okay, take the negative sign, turn it into the fraction divider bar and then just put the rest underneath the fraction bar and the one on top. Five to the negative one of power is nothing but one over five to the first power and something to the first power is just, well, the something in itself. So, so, so you see, each and every fraction, for example, one half could be, could be reduced to something with a negative exponent, two to the negative one of power, for example, in the, um, in the case of one half. Now, seven to the negative 18th power, not a big deal anymore. Just take the negative sign, turn it into the division bar and put the rest underneath. 7 to the 18th power with a 1 on top. And that's basically it. But do you see one tiny little problem with what we have here? There's one problem because um, what would happen if we have 0 to the negative something power? Well then we have 1 over 0 to the something power where 0 to the something power is just 0 times 0 times 0 blah 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 is just 0. So we would have 1 over 0 really doesn't work out. It's not really defined. Meaning one little restriction that we need to put on a is that a cannot be equal to 0. And this is it. That's the lesson about turning exponentials into fractions. And from this point onwards, there's going to be a new playlist on this channel. Next time, I'm going to start off with talking about fractions. And once you know about this little exponentiation rule, everything becomes so much more clear when it comes to fractions. So I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, recommend, channel. If you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those t-shirts I create or support the channel on Patreon. Check out the main channel too and up until the next video, I wish you guys a flammable day. Make sure to subscribe and watch the video till the end. Ciao!